and joining us from Atlanta as his team advances to the semifinals, it is Wick Grosbeck, the owner of the Boston Celtics, on the Harbor One Hotline. Good morning, Wick. So, man, what a morning. Uh, congratulations. Thanks. It was unbelievable. We wanted you there. I invited you down. You couldn't make it. You were unavoidably detained, as they say. No, I think I told uh, you. I think I told you work comes first. Yeah, work comes first. Well, for me, too. That's why I'm here. <laughs> no, it, it seemed like a rather hostile environment last night. Their, a they, town. Their, their fans showed up. Yeah, they showed up. And I've been going about, uh, to Atlanta for years and years. And this is by far the best crowd they had supporting them. It wasn't anti Celtics. It was. Pro Hawks, and it was uh, constant. It was a, uh, it was quite an environment. Wick, going back to Game Five, um, you know, very nice for Greg to be there in attendance with you. But in the fourth, I did notice there was a shift in placement of where people were sitting. What went uh, on there? Did uh, Greg, you know, spill a drink no. or you know, get, have <laughs> no. to be moved? It was bad uh, juju. No. I've never seen Greg spill a drink. <laughs> <laughs> That is true. I generally, I generally um, finish. I just, yes. There's a lot in that comment. Yes, you can. Uh, <laughs> we did it. I did it last uh, last night as well. I had to switch around with Rich Gotham, who was the team president. We switched seats. I'm like, Rich, how about over there? We switched in the fourth quarter, and uh, just the way sometimes I play things. <laughs> but it's not. I'm not officially a jinx. I mean, I, I think, no, no. Uh, I would. I mean, I'd have to then say Robert Kraft's a jinx, right? And, right. Uh, you know, <laughs> but I will say Big Poppy is one and zero, so. You know, he might be the first call for the next game. Oh, there you that's go. fine. If it's Big Poppy before me, then I'm fine. Well, with every that. game uh, I've been to, I'm undefeated. So if uh, you got some seats uh, with the feet on the parquet, I would have came down to the ATL yeah. now. That's my stomping ground, Wick. Come on, man. Now, Wick. Oh, boy, we got to have some fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I could have showed you a few spots. When you look at this team, right, and I know – you know, there are a lot of people that are critical, uh, whether it's, you know, Tatum, Brown and everything. Um, it seems like what what do you look at when as far as what are you impressed about most with this team and the opportunity that they have playing against the Philly team? That's a good team, but their player, their best player is kind of dinged up a little bit. Well, just speaking about us for now, I'm really actually glad we had a game six because that last stretch, the 11 note. 11-0 run and everything else was by far the best we've played in this entire playoffs in a hostile environment as well. So I think this team, uh, you know, took a step forward in that fourth quarter last night. We, I think we hit four threes and two twos. Uh, yeah, four threes and three, two twos, I think, including a put-back slam that really iced it. But uh, JB hit a big three, Tufts contested three. Jason hit, I think, two of them. Al hit two big shots. Marcus Smart hit a three, and um, it was and, and and made a huge assist. I mean that, and then we didn't let them score. We were blocking shots left and right, preventing them from even getting the ball in bounds. So that was a level of basketball that we need needed to find, and we found it. It was interesting after the game, Joe Missoula said that he had learned something in game five and put a lot of that on him. And and um, I'm assuming that when you have a guy who goes from interim coach to head coach that you you like to hear that as an owner. Yeah, they, he's got – and he, he'll be the first to say there's a, there's a, uh, a group of people that have input and decisions about the basketball strategy – and uh, but he's the head of the snake there. Uh, it's definitely his call. And he put in some defensive wrinkles last night, switched things around, did some more trapping, and then took it off. So there were there were definitely some wrinkles in the game plan last night to try to slow down Trey Young and Jante Murray, who are both unbelievable. When it comes to Malcolm Brogdon, a guy that we've talked about with you a few times this season, but him getting the NBA award and then showing up again last night, he had some daggers. How important is he to this team this season? He's unbelievable. He could have finished that game, of course. Um, and whenever he's in, I just have this feeling of calm confidence because that's what he is. He's calm and confident, and then he gets things done. It rubs off. He's, he's truly unbelievable, and I think he's a huge difference maker for us this year so far. Well, Wick, moving forward, uh, I, I'm, I completely agree with uh, what Joe Missoula said. Run a double team and trap. Do the same thing against a guy like Joel Embiid in Philly. How are, 
How are you as far as confidence level with, you know, with your team going in the round two playing, like, like I said, against the team in Philly that their best player is a little nicked up and you guys have done a tremendous job playing them and, you know, basically I think Joel Embiid said, how can it be a rivalry when it's one-sided, meaning this, uh, that every time you guys play them, it seems like you guys always win. So what's your confidence level? What What is Wait, that like? Yeah. There's no bulletin board material today. <laughs> None. Smart. Smart guy. Zero. Smart. And I gotta yeah. tell you, nice try, though. Yeah. But I, I will. That's like the Hawks trying to inbound the ball, and Smart just stood there. I just stood there and just threw, threw, threw the ball at me, and it bounced away. So, nice try. Next question. <laughs> well, then how do you feel about this matchup, then? Yeah. What, what I feel is Philly is absolutely, this might be our fourth playoff series with them, third or fourth. Uh, since I've been here, everyone has been hard fought down to the wire. They have been really, really tough. They're a great team. There is no question about that. Yeah, that's the answer. They're <laughs> really good basketball. Team. Yeah. yeah. And I'm with you, Wick, because I'm, I'm happy that it went to six. That was my lead this morning was that showing that they struggled a little bit in some of the games in the first round. I'm more confident in them going forward because they've already had to deal with, you know, uh, looking themselves in the mirror and knowing that they're up against a very difficult team that a lot of people thought they would be able to handle very easily. I'd like to compliment you on your basketball insight. I totally agree. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, it's uh, back home, and I appreciate you taking the time this morning. I know you got to fly soon. There, there was Courtney brought up that the this team, the Celtics team, was so relaxed prior to this game that they were arguing over the top three condiments in the locker room pregame. Wick, were you there for that? I was there for that, and okay. I, I decided not to weigh in. Okay. I would have been, I would have been garlic aioli myself, but I didn't. Ooh. I didn't uh, take the time to. Uh, but I, I'd like to close, if it's okay, by just remembering Heather Walker, the great, uh, beloved Heather Walker, who passed away from brain cancer yes. uh, last week. And those shooting shirts that the guys were wearing last night were HW, her initials. We dedicated, <clears throat> excuse me, dedicated the win to her. Uh, in the locker room after the game, and it was on the national broadcast. And I personally know that her family, her young kids and husband, watched that broadcast, and uh, it meant a lot. So here's to Heather. Yeah. Unbelievable person. Yeah, and so nice. Best. We talked about it on this show yesterday. And, and uh, Thank you. An amazing mom. and. Mm -hmm. Um, and well done by, by you guys in honoring her. So, all right. So thank you guys. I, I, wait, did you say garlic aioli? Wait, I don't, well, I, you know, I just, I just came up for that. I mean, you know, I, yeah. garlic aioli, aioli is pretty good. What was the consensus in the, in the locker room though? <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I think they, they turn, I mean, they eat peanut butter and jelly sandwiches yeah. before the game. So I really don't know what the debate is. <laughs> Wait, I'm better, or... I bet it was hot sauce was up there. I bet yeah, that's that was, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, I would have. I definitely would have said hot sauce. That's probably a good call, Wiggy. But no ketchup. All right, guys, thanks I, a lot. Uh, no ca I'm not a ketchup person. <laughs> yeah, All right, Wick. Wick, I'll see Wick. <laughs> he's gone. Wick, I'll see you Monday. <laughs> 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 okay. Oh, he's still there. Guys, right. Wick, Wick, what I'm time? What, what, uh, I mean, is it me, you, and Robert <laughs> again on Monday? <laughs> or is it, is it me, me, you, and John Henry? Who's coming Monday? I'm going to have to ask Missoula who he wants to have over there. <laughs> <laughs> Darn it, I'm out. That means Donnie Wahlberg is yeah. going to be over there. <laughs> All right, Wick, you're the best. Thank you. Congrats. Thank you, guys. Thanks, right. thanks. Okay. Bye.